we today here in the arena at the Royal Air Force with their fantastic uh, police dogs. The team that were with us here today have done over 100 tours in Afghanistan. The uh, present day is uh, very much part of the K-9 world. But now we turn our attention to the second of our groups tonight. It gives me great pleasure to hand over to Mr. Graham Hill. Ladies and gentlemen, we now continue with the climax of today's brief competitions, and the second group to be judged today will be the toy group. But before our toy best of breeds enter the main arena, it's my very pleasant duty to introduce... So you join us now for the second of our groups this evening. This is going to be the toy group. It's going to be judged tonight by René Spall Willis. Frank Kane joins me to continue with his commentary this evening. We're looking forward to seeing these best of breed winners. Here's our judge waiting eagerly to come into the ring and get on with her group. Chairman of clubs, Gerald King, waiting to escort her. Rene is chairman of the International Breed Standards in Europe. Not only has she been a successful breeder and exhibitor, but she's a renowned author and editor of several books on dog breeds as well as the dog encyclopedia. A lady of wide interest and talent, being a member of the Royal Horticultural Society and a successful breeder of racing She Must be feeling a little bit nervous, but once she sees the dogs in front of her, I'm sure she will relax and uh, her eye takes over, the natural instinct of a, a good eye for a dog. Big smile as she comes into the ring to take centre stage. Been highly successful in a lot of breeds, toy breeds, hounds and terriers. as she takes her position and readies herself to get her first look at the best of breed winners that are being sent through this evening. We begin with the little Affenpincher, the monkey-faced cheekiness of this breed. And there's the Australian Silky Terrier. <laughs> then the Bichon. And the little Bolognese. And there's the long-coated Chihuahua. And the smooth-coated Chihuahua. Here's the Chinese Crested. Very stylish. And here's the Coton de Tulia. Smooth lines of the black and tan, the English Toy Terrier. And here's the Griffon, a rough-coated Griffon Bruxellois. The flowing coat of the Havanese. And here, the elegance and lifting style of the Italian Greyhound. Sparkling crisp black and white of the Japanese chin. And here's the King Charles Spaniel. The Lochen, the little lion dog. Now for the flowing white coat of the Maltese. The miniature pincher. Smallest of the three pincher sizes. And here's the butterfly dog, the Papillon. Very successful show dog, this, the Pekingese. And here's the little Pom coming in. Strutting with style. And here, the pug. Huge roar for that. Very popular breed. The Yorkshire Terrier finishing up our lineup for the uh, for the toy group. We're missing one. American champion Brentwood Chloe of Forest Creek. And here she comes. Here she comes and now. A late arrival. That's the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel just coming in last of all.
so Rene Paul Willis going to have a look at her best of breeds. A closer examination now, just getting an idea of the outline and the balance of all these lovely toy dogs that have been sent through for her. Of course, she'll get her hands on them in a minute. Yes, the outline and balance are usually the key to getting the right breed type. If the dog's the right shape for the breed and the right proportions, it's usually got the correct breed type. Looking at the King Charles, Lurvchen. Look at the dark pigmentation on that Maltese. You can see it's clearly there against the There's white coat. There's a coats. miniature pincher showing its little socks off, although it hasn't got socks really. <laughs> Pekingese, always positioned to face the judge, mm -hmm. so you get the most of that beautiful head shape. Yorkshire Terrier and the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel out of place in the lineup. In the it's come in late, yes, so it's on the end. So this is Hopi, two and a two and a little bit years old. Belongs to uh, Frank Rosier. They've come from Switzerland to compete today. Bred by Mika Kurjemans and uh, handled by Jean-Francois in the ring. And look at that lovely impish expression, the little black devil dogs. They're so mischievous. Uh, native of Germany. Now this light strutting action, the floating goose step. What a lovely description, a floating goose step. <laughs> Should look quite rugged and natural. Yeah, the floating goose step. This is the Australian Silky Terrier. Gabriel's three and a half years old, belongs to Jonathan Malt, and uh, also handling in the ring, bred by Lisa Welsh and Leanne Bryant. There we are. It, it thought it, it derives from the Australian Terrier and the Yorkshire Terrier. Coat color and coat texture very important. Still maintain some of its terrier instincts. It can still do a job of work with the vermin, I think. And this one was best to breed at the club show for this breed. Always a good sign of quality. Jake is a three year old Bichon Frise, owned by Alan and Maureen Males. Miles, bred by Mrs. Dickinson. Be beautiful head and expression, the dark pigmentation. Judge feeling the coat. Look at the dark, he dark eyes and pigmentation. Bichon Frise means <laughs> it's something to do with a white dog with soft corkscrew curls to the coat one of the South Mediterranean breeds. And a very tidy mover in profile. Flowing action of the Bichon Frise. Wagging tail of a little Bolognese here. This is Vila, 15 months old. They've come from Sweden to compete at Crofts. Belongs to Maria Patterson and Mona Lundgren. And bred by Frederica and Lotten Rondquist. And another of the Bichon family, the white dogs of the Mediterranean. Sturdy and square is what we're looking for in this breed. The coat quite different to the Bichon. They're loose flocks, not curly, and it's basically untrimmed. But it takes a lot of care to keep that coat looking like this. Very, I call them a saucy dog, the Bolognese. Cheeky characters. And look at that divine smile coming towards you. That's a super, super little Bolognese. 
now in the correct place now this is the cavalier king charles spaniel this is an american champion brentwood chloe at forest creek two years old belongs to levi sedgwick and klein and harrison obviously come from the usa to compete bred by ginger harrison in texas actually i think it's owned in this country but it was an american champion yes. before coming yes here. just just come over to this country one of the royal spaniels This colour is called Blenheim, isn't it? Yes, and it takes its name because they were very popular. King Charles II had a lot of these, and Blenheim Palace is where it used to run around. Uh, one of the royal spaniels, very popular in his court, and hugely popular now as a, a family pet. They have such a kind, sweet nature, you can see it in the expression. Large, dark eyes, important in the breed. The little long-coated Chihuahua. This is a Gibraltar champion, an Irish champion called Extra Special for Helena, which is a lovely title. Goliath is the pet name, two years old. Uh, belongs to Patrick and Wilma McDevitt, and they've come from Derry in Northern Ireland, bred by Eva Wolbeck. Goliath, very appropriate. They may be the smallest breed in the world, but they think they're giants in their own mind. Wonderful characters, larger than life. Here we have that dome skull, fairly short in the forefist, but large flared ears, a feature of the breed. Strutting his stuff. Now, the smooth coat chihuahua, by comparison, this is Mav, four years old, uh, belongs to Truja, Matty, Card, and Devilshow, and uh, I can't read the rest of the writing. It says they come from Manchester, so I should be able to, uh, bred by Carol. Yes, yeah, just looking at the tail, dense coat, the short coat. Colour me blue, he's called, and that's a, a, a blue with white trim on him. See a lovely e head and expression there. Essentially the same standard as the long coat, but just in a different yes, jacket. Yes, really using his hocks. Uh, that tail carriage, absolutely perfect. Just slightly like a scimitar, just coming over the back slightly. And as you say, little tiny breed, but he looks like he owns the place. This is a Chinese crested. This is Kaluya, ten and a half months old, so a real baby to have won best of breed at Crofts. It's a dog, belongs to Virginia Doris and Kay Paisa, and they've come from Florida to compete here at Crofts. So a long journey involved for such a youngster. And you notice, you notice, Jennifer, it's only ten and a half months old and already an American champion. A great achievement. Such characteristic coat pattern, isn't it? The coat pattern, My Little Pony, I call it. A mane of mane of hair down the neck to the shoulders, and then over every pastern, the pastern's at the bottom of the legs, and a little plume on the tail. <laughs> That's a great wiggle going on there. The Coton de Tullier, and this one is uh, five years old, owned by Veronique Plus. They've come from France to compete, bred and handled by the same person as well. Again, the distinctive white coat set off by the dark pigmentation. Now, we'll see when she moves that she has a very distinctive top line, a rise over the loin, falling slightly to the tail. They're called cottons. It describes the quality of the coat. It's like hard cotton, single-coated, because brilliant white. They may have a few shadings in it, but it's a hard texture. And this little person's won 55 challenge certificates abroad, so quite some winner. And, of course, very popular in France. This is Daniel, the English toy terrier, the black and tan, two years old, 
judged by Zena Thorne Andrews today belongs to Joe Acton, James Barbara, and Patrick McKaysey. They've also come from the United States to compete at Crufts, bred by James Burrows. Now, it's thought that the English Toy Terrier is derived from uh, the miniaturization of the Manchester Terrier. Many of the breeds in the toy group come from miniaturization of sporting breeds, and here's one. The extended trot, the little extended trotting action of the English Toy Terrier, a slight rise over the loin, wedge-shaped head, and, and those, those gorgeous ears. Candle flame shaped ears. Another cheeky face. This is the Griffon Bruxellois. This is Duncan, five years old, owned by Zana Drobayasheva. And uh, they've come from the Latvian Republic, bred by Ilana and Alex Shevesky. I think being a little bit shy there, hiding behind the judge. <laughs> Yes, that broad skull, large dark eyes. This one a wire coated one, so it's hard, dense, wiry coat, which re requires some trimming. They also come in the smooth coated variety. They should be short, square, and compact. Again, a lot of substance in a small compass. Like all the toy dogs, they might be small in size, but never in stature or presence. And great characters to live with, the Griffon. Oh, there's a big sneeze there. <laughs> Imelon Helza Poffin, Juno, is a four-year-old Havanese, owned by the Harpers. They've come from London, also bred the dog and handling in the ring tonight. National dog of Cuba. So... An inscrutable expression there yes, as the, the judge is going over the dog. Oval eye shape. Yes, the breed should be rectangular, slightly longer than high, and should have a, an athletic light stride, which is important. Slight silkiness of texture, the silky dog. Silky texture, high set tail carried over the back. And just like any other show dog, these little ones are fit as fiddles in order to get to this level at Crufts. Such grace and elegance, the Italian Greyhound. This is Mickey, two and a half years old, belongs to Barney Turner and Becky Henley, who also bred the dog. Becky's handling in the ring tonight. Beautiful e elegance. Again, a miniaturization of a sporting breed. Coming down from the Greyhound and the Whippet, similarity in shape they have a high stepping action they should have some lift in their front movement a rise over the loin this should be a series of gentle curves a curving breed and so delicate to look at in profile there N not a pet for the clumsy because they've got fine bone so but they should be fine but strong bone This is a Japanese chin. This is Damage, three years old, owned by Tony Olcom, and uh, also bred the dog and is handling in the ring. They come from Lo Royal Leamington Spa, so not far down the road. From 1895, Japanese chins were sufficiently... They should be compact and cobby. They're called chins, which means cat-like. Now there he is. Stepping out, they should have a slight lift but a straight action, level top line, a silky coat. This one, black and white, they also come in lemon and white. Shows a little white in the corner of the eye, which is correct for the breed. Such a delightful breed, this. Look at that expression. A King Charles Spaniel. This is four and a half year old Theo, owned by Bill Moffat and Joyce Robbins, and uh, bred by Sheila Waters. The other of the Royal Spaniels. We saw the Cavalier earlier. This is the King Charles. 
subtle differences. You can see the difference in the shape of the head. Although there's a dome, the ear set makes the head look very different. Yes. More domed in the skull, shorter in the foreface, the lips well padded. Breed, this breed has really come on. This dog has won the won the group at Brooks before. He's also the a best in show winner of all breeds. The first for many years to do that. Breed has made great strides in type, temperament, and movement. This is Peppa, three and a half year old Lauchen owned by Zoe Richardson and Dawn Richardson, bred by John and Elizabeth Heck in Australia. Yes, we see the strong, short head of the Lurfchen there. Large, dark eyes. Now, Lurfchen means little lion dog, and he takes that name from his coat pattern. He's trimmed like that, a mane of hair at the front, a plume on his tail, the clipped hind quarters should be sturdy and square. They're one of the most substantial of the toy breeds. The Maltese, unmistakable in coat and character. This is Bangal, two and a half years old, owned by Pamela Armstrong and bred by Sarah and Rosemary Jackson. Again, another one competing all the way from America. And it's breeder, Sarah Jackson, who is handling it. The judge just looking at the silky texture of the coat there. Very important, looking at the tail set. Dark pigmentation on nose and eyes, which sets off that coat. <laughs> Joyous in the showing, definitely. Now, lovely jaunty carriage. The standard says no extended weaving. This should come at you straight and no crossing of the legs, which would de denote a lack of chest. Beautiful level top line. Great show dog, great attitude, we'd say. Really extending in front and a gorgeous expression. The sleek lines of the little miniature pincher, the smaller of the three pincher sizes. This is three-year-old Francesca, owned by Aileen Cool. They've come from Marlborough in Wiltshire, and they bred this one themselves as well. Sharp, square outline. Wedge-shaped head, there's pricked ears. Very alert. This one a red. We'll also see them in black and tan. We see the Doberman Pincher in the working group and the Pincher. Here, the miniaturization of those working dogs. And this little one has matured beautifully. Top puppy in 2012, now with 11 cc's and winning best of breed at Crufts. And one of the features is the high stepping hackney action in this breed. little butterfly dog, the Papillon. This is Dave, six years old now, owned by Elise van der Mellen and Sharon Newcomb. They've come from New Mexico in the United States, bred by Carol Lees in the UK. So one that's gone abroad and has come back to compete here. Yes, a big winner. Now, the little Papillon, the butterfly dog, and it gets that title from the shape of his spread ears. There you are, those ears look like the spread wings of a butterfly. This one a tricolour. They should be fine boned and dainty, dainty and have a fluttering action. A, s a silky coat. This one fully furnished, light and dainty on the move. And look at those ears being used, the little butterfly dog. judge looking at the characteristic black mask of this fawn Pekingese, such a big winner in this country. Eric is four years old now, owned by Albert Easton and Philip Martin, handled by Bert Easton in the ring. 44 cc's, this is quite some champion. 
He is the breed record holder now. He's taken over the breed record. Bert Eason, very successful breeder from Scotland. He's had best in show at clubs before. This dog following famous ancestry. Just getting arranged before we move because with all that coat we've got to look just right. Yes, low set and sturdy. There's a lot of substance in the dog, especially at the front end. They're broad chested, lighter in the hind quarters, but the head should be wide and shallow, envelope shaped, but large dark eyes and a lovely dark mask to set off that expression. They go with a dignified rolling action, as we see there, which comes from the wide chest. And in the most beautiful condition. Yes, without being overcoated. They don't need too much coat. This is just shows off the body shape nicely. Wonderful action, typical of the breed. This is two and a half year old Colin who rejoices in the name of unbeaten Premiera. Owned by uh, Bozen, Bozina Borowska and uh, also bred by, by them. And they've come all the way from Poland to compete. Look at that little face. Foxy expression. Beautiful. This one an orange. They should be short back, the smallest of the spits. Harsh coated. Little final brush before we go off on the move. They're such impish little dogs, these, and of course we saw one win the group at Crafts not very long ago. And they should be short-backed, high set tail, and a relatively short neck, so it looks really like a little Jaffa orange on legs. <laughs> should be fine-boned and dainty. And yet somehow they have a power about them and a real presence, Pomeranians. Ever popular in the toy group, this is the pug, of course. Mac is four years old, owned by Louise Brooks Lowe, who also bred Mac. They've come from London. Louise is handling in the ring as well. Mac saying, No, I don't want you to feel my face, thank you very much. What I really want is that piece of chicken. A top of 256 pugs here today. What an achievement. Look at that expression. All that <laughs> wrinkling and work in the head. Actually, all that expression says to me is chicken, there's <laughs> chicken there. The dark mask sets off the dark eyes and expression. Clear fawn coat just being checked by the judge. Tight twist of the tail. Now showing off the typical pug rolling action, full of its own self-importance. <laughs> this is called Pugalicious. That's a wonderful kennel name, isn't it, for the breed? This dog has won the group at Crufts before, in, in 2012, I believe. Substance in a small space. Multum in parvum, it's called. Now the final dog in our group, this is the Yorkshire Terrier, a multi-world champion, this one, that's come from Japan to compete. It's called Julie, five years old, belongs to Yoshiko Obana, who also bred the dog. It's handled by Sergio Amiens in the ring. The beautiful fall of coat, the rich tan from the head. The coat, looking at the furnishings, very important. Silky texture, steel blue body coat, and tan furnishings on the head. Again, a, a terrier, a terrier instinct in this toy breed, and we're stretching out. They could still do a job of work. We could still see off the odd rat or mouse. Lovely level top line, tail carried like a terrier. That's very nice. Full of character. And that glorious coat. Yes, Juliana, best in show at the toy show last year.
So we've seen all our toy best of breed winners. Who is she going to pull out for her final cut? So Rene Spore-Willis taking a look at those best of breeds again. Just reminding herself of what she's just seen. Some very strong contenders, Jessica, that, and a lot of top winners amongst them. Out comes the Australian Silky Terrier and the Bichon Frise. The Chinese Crested comes out next. The King Charles Spaniel, oh, Theo, comes that. out. Love the King Charles. The Maltese, that showy Maltese with a lovely top line. In comes the Peak. And the Pomeranian. And the Yorkshire Terrier, that's a very strong lineup. Now we'll see. So here we go, the first of them moving again. This is the Australian Silky Terrier, Red Angel Limitine, Gabriel. And the Bichon Frise, yeah. such a popular dog in the toy group. He's won his first challenge certificate today, so his first rung on the ladder, as you say. They need three to become a champion. Good way to start at Crofty. And judged by Jeff Corris, who knows a little about this breed. The Chinese Crested. The Chinese Crested. This is American Grand Champion Kalens Kaula. Only ten and a half months old, so still a pup. And full of confidence. That lovely King Charles Spaniel, Theo. A sporting spaniel in miniature, which is what the Royal Spaniels should be. He's a great mover. He's been a great ambassador for the breed. Bred in this country, exported to America, and coming back to top the lot. This is the gorgeous Maltese. Beautiful outline. Lovely top line and great stride. The Pekingese with a heritage behind him, a dynasty of sizeable proportions. And the handler going quite the right pace. They shouldn't be rushed, a dignified roll. And of course, it's no problem for this dog getting across the ring because he's sound and he's healthy. But exaggerated. And as Frank so beautifully put it, a little furry Jaffa orange on legs, that delightful Pomeranian. This is Colin. Colin, and a lovely little brisk action. Looks to be a beautiful coat texture. And the, last of the, the Yorkshire Terrier looking a picture standing and now on the move. Juliana. Sergio Handling, from, he's from Spain, the bitch bred in Japan. Elegant but full of character and going really well tonight. So, Frank, the board's coming in. What do you like? Well, there's a lot to like. <laughs> Pekingese. The, of course, Theo. I the, love the, the King, King Charles. Charles. And, of course, the Maltese went very well indeed. Well, she's certainly staying in that area of the lineup. Or drought. Who will it be? Oh, 
it's the little jumper orange on legs. The little Pomeranian takes the toy group for 2014. Colin, Colin wins the toy group. And his name is Unbeaten Premiera. So what better name could you have for the dog that's going to top the toys at Crafts? All the way from Poland and from second place goes to Scotland. Up to Moffat in Scotland with Bertie's. Joint top toy the for East, last yes. year in the UK, so a deserved second place in the group. There's the beach on a great day. First CC today and third in the group and a very excited owner, very happy. Well, put in the ring this evening in such beautiful form and that lovely Yorkshire Terrier going into group four. So let's have a look at Colin. Just look at the presence of that little show dog. A tiny package, but a mighty personality in there. Unbeaten Premiera, just two and a half years old. Colin takes the toy group for Crufts 2014. What do you reckon, Frank? Well, he, he beat 151 other Pomeranians today, and he looks pretty self-assured there. Re remarkable. Ah. Look at the expression on that little face. Foxy expression, which is what you want. You can see the harshness of that coat texture from here. You can almost feel it. Can you imagine what life must look like from that perspective? Mm. Everybody's mm. towering over me with trophies and rosettes and everything else, and here I am. Actually, I'm the winner. And that's why you don't go to, down to toy dogs on the floor, because you couldn't be a, a sort of dominating shape to them. So what a wonderful natural stance, four square. Still showing to the fore. Bertie's done accepting a handshake and a big rosette for second place in the group with the peak. Beautiful pigment, the black nose and eyes against the white face of that Bichon Frise. And there we have our group four, the Yorkshire Terrier. I don't think that tail's gone uh, at half mark. It just shows all how she loves the showing. <laughs> a natural terrier tail carriage. <laughs> so now we're going to see a lap of honour for Colin, who has owned the ring this evening. The little Pomeranian takes Crufts Toy Group for 2014. So we have another finalist for Sunday night.